usually whenever you think of somebody's device getting exploited or compromised, it's it's usually, you know, you would think because of either their lack of online hygiene, like the safety that they, their safety online, or really just a lack of common sense in general. With a device being compromised, usually somebody would have to click on a file and download it, or maybe click on a sketchy link, right? Well, except for nowadays, and it's not anything new, it's happened before in the past, but with zero-click exploits, meaning that there is spyware and malware out there that can actually compromise your devices without you even touching or doing anything to that device, which makes it a hundred times scarier. This video is pretty much just a PSA to anybody who may be using an iPhone with uh, iOS 16.6. If you are running an iPhone with iOS 16.6, I very much urge you to update to 16.6.1. And the reason for this is because researchers at the Citizen Lab actually just found a zero-click exploit, which they are dubbing Blast Pass. I was actually reading an article from Dark Reading. They do a lot of articles about, like, you know, cybersecurity, the, the whole infosec world. And anyways, it says, Citizen Lab discovered two no-click, zero-day vulnerabilities while checking an unidentified individual's device, which was delivering mercenary spyware from NSO Group's Pegasus. Now, first of all, who is the Citizen Lab? They are, uh, I don't even know exactly what it is, but it's a lab out at, uh, in University of Toronto. And basically, they just help, like, human rights and nonprofit organizations pretty much just like kind of survey you know uh uh the government's power you know and kind of what happens in cyberspace against human rights and how uh, human rights can be abused pretty much and they've done a lot of good work but that's pretty much the gist of it um they're security researchers and probably so much more uh, that i don't even know or understand but yeah, they do a lot of good work, and recently they discovered a zero-click exploit on a uh, Washington, D.C., I think it was civil rights employee or something like that. They have a little write-up here. There's not, a, there's not a bunch in this little write-up. They do say that they're planning to put a, uh, more, a uh, more detailed write-up at some point in the future, and if that's the case, then we can check that out too, but... I just wanted to go over this a little bit, and like I said, this video is pretty much just a PSA for anybody using iOS 16.6. Please just, you know, update update your phone. Granted, though, I do want to say that most of the time, your average Joe Blows, right, aren't going to get hit with, like, these million-dollar spyware uh, tools or anything like that. These people you know, state-sponsored threat actor groups and whatnot, they're being, they're looking for bigger fish, right? But that doesn't mean that if you are running a certain software version and it has a exploit out there, there is an exploit out in the wild, you don't want to be compromised by that, even if you are just a tiny fish, you know? So they're calling this exploit uh, Blast Pass. And what it says is that the uh, exploit chain was capable of compromising iPhones running the latest version of iOS 16.6 without any interaction from the victim. That's what I was saying in the beginning is usually when you hear about somebody, you know, their device being compromised, it's because they're the ones who kind of let that malware or that spyware in, right? They had to download a file or they had to click on a link or something. With something like this, these zero-click exploits, they don't even have to do anything. All it says is that an attacker just has to send an iMessage from their phone to the victim's phone. And just like that, your phone is compromised. And that shit's just wild and scary. They were checking the device of an individual employed by a Washington, D.C.-based civil society organization with international offices. Bigger fish, right? They're... They're uh, not saying that this person deserves to be um, targeted, but just your regular everyday person, they're not going to try and hit you with this, you know, super expensive spyware tool. But again, I'm just repeating myself. Still, update. They, of course, disclosed this to Apple. 
uh, the CVEs are actually 2023 41 064 and then also because there's two of them there's two exploits then 2023 410 61 it does say that the exploit involved a pass kit which i don't exactly know what a pass kit is but they have this um apple has an article or basically tutorials on how to build a pass it has something to do with uh like the wallet app he, I don't know exactly what these passes are, but I found something on Apple's website that says passes are digital representations of information that might previously be on paper or plastic. They let users take action in the physical world, such as boarding a flight, attending an event, or claiming a coat check item. So like the wallet app on an iPhone, right? You can use it for a bunch of different things. You can load your debit and credit cards on there. You can... Uh, put like boarding passes for flights and whatnot you can do a bunch of things and so that pass is pretty much just from what i can tell is how it goes from being a physical object to then being you know electronic on your phone but again i'm not i'm not an apple developer or anything like that so i don't know too much about this that's just kind of what i'm what i'm taking from this but there were two vulnerabilities. One had to do with uh, image I.O. And the image I.O. framework is actually what allows uh, most applications to read and write file formats. And then the second exploit, of course, had to do with the wallet. So basically what happened was that these, uh, these bad actors, these threat actors, actually were able to find these vulnerabilities within uh, those frameworks and then the, the wallet application and whatnot. And because of those zero-click exploits, they were able to deliver the spyware, the NSO Group's Pegasus. So the NSO Group Technologies or NSO Technology Group is basically a, a Israeli cyber intelligence company and they they basically sell spyware tools and whatnot to uh, governments all over the world they actually created and sell pegasus and what it is used for was actually to basically well to remotely gain access to iphones now i don't know if it also works for androids i know it is for iPhones. I don't know if it's for both. So I did just look it up and it is. It's for iOS and Android as well. So both operating systems are uh, vulnerable to Pegasus. And so yeah, this is just, you know, just some crazy shit that's out there in the wild that's happening. Of course, like I said uh, earlier, that usually your, you know, regular Joe Schmo isn't going to get hit with these super expensive spyware tools, especially if your job isn't like that important, you know. Um, these people target, you know, journalists and uh, other people with information, right? Uh, not saying that we don't get spied on on a daily basis, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of put a PSA out there for anybody, any of my viewers who may have an iPhone or who use an iPhone. Maybe you uh, didn't know about this and you're still running 16.6. Just go ahead and update to 16.6.1. Uh, um, all right, so that's everything, or that's the video. Just a quick one today. Uh, be on the lookout for a couple more videos coming up here in the next few days. Within the, the rest of this week, I'll definitely have two more videos coming out. Um, so those will be fun. And yeah, uh, other than that, if you like the video, consider hitting that like button because it really helps out the channel way more than you know. And also, if you're not subscribed, you know, hit that subscribe button because we have a bunch more content coming your way. Oh, I also, I, I saw this tweet or something whenever this first came out a few days ago about how some uh, iPhone users thought that the 16.6.1 update was just specifically so that Apple could, like, drain the iPhone's batteries or whatever, or diminish the battery health since the new iPhones are coming out within, like, less than a week now. I, I'm not saying that they do that or don't do that. I don't know. That's kind of been a thing that people have talked about for years now, but I just thought it was funny. I mean, there's this crazy exploit out there, and they're just, you know, arguing about battery health. So, update your phones, stay safe, we'll catch you in the next one.